Hello, welcome back. If you've been following along with our weekly live streams, you'll know that I had some technical difficulties and possibly we're still having it. We did some tests yesterday and it worked just fine. And now Rob is saying it's blurry again. So I'm just gonna stay small on the screen and hopefully the screen share works just fine. So welcome back. Uh, I spent no video of my head. Can you guys see my head? Rob's saying he's not seeing my head. Um, so let me know in the chat if you can actually see me because the problem is he's saying that my video is black. Can you see me or do you just see the share screen? Uh, I'm not hearing from the chat. I'm waiting for you guys to, to comment. Nancy says she can see me, Rob. Yeah, my head looks fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, they say they can see me, but now it's blurry. All right. Well, I'm going to stay small. We're still working on the blurry issue because um, it looks um, good on my end. Somebody else says the, the rest is black. All right. Well, I'm going to move forward and hopefully you can see my screen share. Um, Rob wants me to go picture in picture like that. Um, so... If you want to submit some pictures for next week, we're going to be doing birds. So if you have some bird photos, um, use the link in the picture on the screen. Um, blurry Darlene, but black screen. Okay, so let me change the screen and let's see if we can make that work. Um, let's see, if I go to people, do you see anything now? Do you see any pictures now? I could try removing this. Well, disappointing. We thought we solved it. What do you guys see? Do you see Lightroom? Or you just see blurry me? Just you and black screen. Oh, okay, I'm gonna remove that and then we'll try it again. How about now? I removed it and went back to just the screen. So now it's just Lightroom. I'm not on the screen at all. Is it working? Screen. Uh, Marguerite says she sees me surrounded by black. Just black for Sheila. All black. No, they're still not seeing it, Rob. They're not seeing what you're seeing. Go to YouTube and, and um, mute it, Rob, and just see what you're seeing on YouTube on the on the actual live. Um, now just black screen. Yeah, they still don't see the screen. Well, this is frustrating, guys. Um, we need to figure out something. Let me mute myself. Yeah, no, it's live. I'm looking at the live right now, and it's all black, and I'm blurry. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna just take that off the screen and let's try it again. We're gonna try it one more time. Otherwise, we're just gonna have a party today. Um, how about now? Is it working now? It is disappointing, Sheila. Um, yeah, I'm super blurry again. Okay, I see a screen on the live. Do we have a screen? Do we have a screen? Do we have a screen? Can you see Lightroom? Yay! Okay. <laughs> well, I'm blurry again. We've been sending this to the, the tech support um, for the software that we use for doing the streaming. It's called StreamYard. And um, they're still working on, on what the issue is because it worked just fine previously and we haven't changed anything on our end. And we actually increased our internet speed. So we have screaming fast internet now. So that is not the issue. Um, Rob says audio is out of sync. Well, I'm just going to go off the screen then so you don't see my lips moving. Um, so we're going to do that. All right. So we're doing people photos today. Whew. I um, spent two and a half weeks in Cuba. Um, yes, I have one of your images, Lee. Uh, where is it? Oh, the very first one. Yes. Um, 
so I spent two and a half weeks in Cuba and I photographed a lot of people. Um, so that's one of my favorite things to do. And we have lots of people photos left from the last time we did people. So we're going to continue with these. Um, so I'm going to save Holly's because she said she's going to come a little bit later. Um, but we've got quite a few different ones here that we can work on. I am going to work on this one, Lee. Um, and I noticed that that's you've marked that for Luminar, right? Because the, the issue with this one, you said that is your cousin and her daughter. So the issue with this one, uh, let me see if I can get the screen settings, was that the daughter's really sharp, right? She's sharp, but the mom is not. And that has to do with a depth of field issue. So the aperture used here was F4. So the mom is too far behind the daughter to get them both in focus. So if you want them both in focus, they need to get their faces closer together. Um, <laughs> Sheila says she missed seeing my lips move. Well, my lips are out of sync. So um, you're just going to have to, we, we'll have to take what we can get, Sheila. You can't see my lips today. I'll come back on screen in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to try and solve the, the focus issues, okay? And you're using Luminar, so I'm going to open this one directly in Luminar. I've already got um, the images here in Luminar. So I'm going to do some basic editing first, as usual. So I'm going to start with develop. Now, this is not, is it a raw file? It says that it's not a raw file. Interesting. Um, oh, probably because I applied something. Uh, let me undo that. There we go. Okay, now we can do develop raw. Okay, so I was trying this super sharp, but just before I went live. So I'm gonna go to develop raw first, and let's to see if we can find a camera profile that looks a little better. Portrait's very red, so I'm not crazy about that. Neutral, let's try camera standard. Okay, that looks like it's a nice color. It's got a little bit more red than I'd like. And that's actually not bad. So it gives them a little bit more skin tone. Um, we'll fix the color. So as usual, we want to look at the histogram. Oh, let me turn my little pointer on for my mouse. We want to look at the histogram and we want to make sure that the histogram is touching the edge so that we have some whites. And we can do that either using the curves tool by just tucking it in a little bit here, right? Or using the white slider here and increasing it. So we're increasing the whites which is pulling it over to the right. See that? Watch the histogram as I pull that over, okay? And you'll notice that the histogram is the same here on the curves level layer or this tool as it is up here, okay? So that just increases the whites a little bit. And other than that, the exposure is really good, okay? If anything, I might just dial the midtones down a little bit and maybe the highlights down a little bit too. Okay. Now I want to make sure that I have some blacks. Now I'm going to turn on the clipping warnings, and that's the J key on the keyboard, or you can just click these little circles up here in the histogram. Okay. So I want to make sure that I'm not clipping any whites right off the chart. Okay. So I want to keep a nice clean white, but not off the chart. And then I want to add some black. So we have some black clipping, and that's okay because now we have a nice rich color with nice whites and blacks. So that's what we're going for, right? I am going to adjust the color a little bit because they look like maybe they're a little green. So I'm gonna give them a little more pink. Let's try auto if there's an auto. No, there's no auto. Let's try daylight, okay? So that's not bad. We could try the eyedropper and try her black shirt. That's really red. Or we could try this wall in the background. If you know that there's something that's neutral color, you can use that to click on. I feel like it's just it's just got an odd color tint and I can't put my finger on it. So I know what tool I'm gonna use to, to try and solve that. So I'm gonna leave it sort of like that as it was done. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of sharpness here, okay? But not too much because we're gonna need to focus on sharpening up mom, right? We don't need noise reduction or any of that stuff. Okay, so that's pretty good for basic edits, okay? We can also do things like use the portrait tools on here um, to sharpen, to brighten up the face. I'm gonna use face light. So this is a great one because I can do face light 
and then darken the whole picture and it will basically dodge their face, right? We can brighten the eyes, right? We can enlarge the eyes. Keep in mind that all of these things do it on both people, apply to both people, right? So see how the eye whitening, eye enhancer is great. Look what it does to the irises. I love that one. Dark circles. And I think their eyebrows are okay. Let's whiten the teeth a little bit. See that? Brightening the teeth. And then just give them a little bit darker lips. Okay. So that's good for face. I'm going to do skin. They've got pretty good skin, but she's got a few blemishes here. So let me just zoom in a little bit and see if when I apply this defects, if it, it solves that. So I'm going to do a little bit of skin smoothing. That's the amount slider. Okay. And then let's just check this off. Okay. So look, it got most of them. Okay. So I can just go in with the erase tool and get the rest of the blemishes. Okay. But it did most of them. So let's just do that. And I don't want to go too far with the skin smoothing. We'll leave it there. Now I want to deal with that sharpness issue and the color issue, okay? So there's two things we want to correct here. Color, there's a tool called color, and this slider I've talked about um, in regards to other things, but when you use this remove color cast, it tries to correct any weird colors, but I find that it adds a lot of contrast and darkness, okay? So I'm going to bring it up just part way, and you see how it's kind of taking out that green tint, okay? I'm still not totally happy with the color, so we can either try and desaturate some things um, or shift some hues, right? So their faces usually have a lot of orange. You can see as I dial orange up and down, it's affecting the skin tone. Skin tone is a lot of orange. So if I go a little bit this way, that's not too bad, right? Um, I want to sort of desaturate green because I'm seeing a green tint. So if I desaturate green, see what's happening in the background? There's this green tint there. Look what happens. And this is just my eyes knowing that there's a green tint. Okay. There's also cyan. So it's kind of that odd bluish tint in the background. Okay. I can also try shifting the hue. Well, that's not going to work at all. Let's see what that's doing. Okay, so it's correcting the red in her hair, which is nice. So her hair looks more brown as opposed to red. And it's correcting some of the colors in the background. Okay, so use the color tool, this remove color cast, and the hue adjustment to adjust colors that are a little bit out of whack. Okay. Let me try this one. So I just kind of try all the sliders and see if they do anything. I'm going to give the reds just a tiny bit of orange as well. And yellow, let's go that way. Okay. If you have an image like this where you're still struggling to get rid of the color cast, um, you can use a LUT on top of it, or we could turn this one into black and white, which would also work really well. Right? So worst case scenario, if you're having trouble, um, I'm going to put myself back on the screen. I feel weird not talking <laughs> to you guys. Um, worst case scenario, if you have an image that has some color challenges, right, make it black and white or apply a lot and go with something more creative. Right? Now let's try and deal with that sharpness issue. Okay, so there's the detail panel, which is up here, many right? details. And then there's also super sharp if you have the extensions. Okay, so I'm gonna do both, right? So if you don't have the extensions, you can use the details panel. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here because I wanna see mom's face, okay? So I'm going to be doing this to apply just to mom's face, okay? So this is my trick for sharpening images. If you bring the small details slider up, okay, see how she looks sharpened? It definitely looks like she's getting more noise, okay? So I'm going to make sure that I mask it, okay? A little bit. Let's try medium details. And let's see if she looks any sharper. It does look a little sharper, but you're starting to get some noise, okay? Because it's sharpening 
the fine details of the actual image. So I'm just going to mask this only to mom. Okay, so what's the best way out of these things to use which which of these options to mask just to mom's face? Right? I'm going to use a radial gradient, which is like an oval or a circle, right? Because I can make it the shape of her face. So I'm just going to make an oval, drop the fade, and I just want on her face. I want to get the hair a little bit as well. So let's go a little bigger like so. Because if the face, if the eyes and the hair look sharp, the image will look sharp. Okay. So that's a little trick. So let's apply that. Uh, actually, I need to invert it because it's applying on the outside. So wherever it's red. Okay. So invert it. Okay. Now I'm going to copy it. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with noise reduction. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of noise reduction because it's picked up some noise on mom. Okay, see that? So I'm just going to do a little bit of noise reduction and then paste that same mask in. Okay, so it's just applying here. Now, if you have the extension, okay, let's try super sharp. I tried applying it on this image just before we went live. This one for me is a little bit hit and miss. It takes quite a while to run and the face enhancer, that little checkbox that's down here, does not do a good job. Um, I don't recommend using it. And I haven't done a video on this extension for the Luminar course yet because it needs work and it, it needs some improvements. So it's still got some, some issues. Um, Susmita, Susmita says, what did you just do to edit the raw? So what happened, Susmita, was I had applied super sharp before going live. And so then when I was in the main tools section, it was not showing me develop raw because I'd already applied something else. So I just undid that and it went back to reverted back to the unedited version in the raw file. The raw edit was still there. Okay. Rob is reminding everybody that we're still experiencing technical difficulties. Hopefully the screen share is working just fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm probably blurry, <laughs> which is what people were saying. And there was an audio problem. So we're still trying to resolve why my video feed is so blurry because I've done some tests um, yesterday and it wasn't. Oh, goodness. Okay. So you can see this is why I don't use <laughs> this, this, um, one very often. So I'm going to go back and do low. Super sharp, like I said, is hit and miss. Um, the other one that, that's actually really great for sharpening images like this, where you have a portion of the image that's out of focus that you want to sharpen is Topaz um, Sharpen AI. And I don't think that the super sharp with Luminar is there yet. Okay. So let's run it on low. And there's another option here too. So I'm running it on universal sharpening. I can also run it with um, motion and see if it works any better. But like I said, it takes a really long time to run, which is kind of why I ran it before we went live, right? So I have a pretty fast computer and I also had my computer in the shop just when I was in Cuba, actually. Didn't take it with me. And um, okay, there we go. And my computer is now set up optimally. Okay, so let's have a look and see what this is actually doing. Oh, now I closed it. Uh, I don't want to click on that because it's going to, there we go. Okay. So let me just go back here and see what this guy is doing. So you see how it is sharpening. It is sharpening her, right? So I'm going to do this same paste in. So it's just on mom, right? And does it look sharper overall, right? I think it does. Let me just zoom in one level here. Okay, so it's not perfect, but mom's definitely sharper, right? So the super sharp AI run on the low setting works pretty well here, right? So to finish this image, like I said, I'm going to use mood and apply a LUT. And now they've got these sorted out. Um, I'm hoping that they come up with a preview for LUTs, which they did for all presets. Oh, there's something happening here. Hang on. Something happening. It's blurry, but 
uh, <laughs> I'm receiving a cupcake because it is my birthday week. So happy birthday week. <laughs> happy birthday week to me. Uh, I'm going to an art show with my mom tonight. So cheers to anybody else having a birthday this week. And I'm not going to tell you my wish. <laughs> now we got smoke in here. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> I know you know. I knew you I knew you knew, Sheila. Um, okay, so thanks guys. Happy birthday to me. Um, so lot. Unfortunately, there's no previews yet. Okay, so there's some portrait toning, cross processing. The one that I usually like is sepia, and I think it's gonna work really well on this one. So I'm applying it on the color image, right? So if I go all the way, it's gonna be full sepia, but if I keep it down lower, see how it just gives sort of an antique look? And I actually really, really like this style. So the sepia mood or lot kind of gives this, this old fashioned look to the portrait, right? And it gets rid of all those color issues that we're having. And the last thing that I would normally do on here is to just apply a little quick edge vignette, like so. We could also do the portrait bokeh um, to darken this background, but I'm gonna show that on one of the other images. Um, let's just see if we can do it real quick here. Portrait bokeh under the portrait tools doesn't apply till you drag this slider up. Then it will analyze the image looking for the people, okay? Give it a second to catch up. Okay, so then you'll see the mask. Okay, so all I want to do here is I don't necessarily want to blur the background. Well, I can. I want to darken it. Okay, so I'm going to darken the background. And you see there's kind of a halo around here. So what I find um, I usually do is I usually just do focus at 50%. So the focus brush. And I just go around the edge. Okay, so I just kind of soften the edge a little bit. So I'm kind of outlining the hair. So I'm overlapping into the background a little bit just to get rid of that halo. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, I might do one more pass up here. So I would just do that until my mouse is not cooperating with me today until I get rid of the halo. Okay, one more pass there. That looks pretty good. Like so. See that? So see what it's doing. If I turn this tool off. Okay, so it's just darkening and minimizing that background. Okay. Let's do a full before and after. And I would go in with the erase tool and deal with the rest of those blemishes on the daughter's face as well real quickly with the erase tool. Okay, how's the how's the screen share? Is it reasonably sharp? Like, can you guys see what I'm doing? The screen share looks okay. I'm looking at it live. Um, it looks okay. Not as sharp as it could be, but not too bad. All right, so let's do another image. Let's do one in Lightroom. Okay, so I've got a few different ones. Um, Sheila's here, so let's do one of Sheila's. Now I've got a few of yours, Sheila. We did one before. Um, this little guy is great. I'm gonna do the one that has the most challenges, okay? Because I think that you'll learn the most from that. This one here, um, self-portrait, <laughs> has the same issue. Um, you're not quite sharp, Sheila, and the background is. So you could definitely run some of the sharpening things on just on your face, okay? And Lightroom is not great for that. So any kind of time you need to do sharpening, I would either take it to Luminar or take it to Topaz, okay? But let's work on this one, okay? And she's indicated she wants these edited in Lightroom. Or do you prefer, Sheila? Do you want me to do this in Lightroom or combination of Lightroom and Luminar for finishing? Because I know, I know you have both. <laughs> I'm much younger, Sheila. Um, a good trick to remove the halo. Yes, when you're using the portrait um, bokeh AI, I find that it does tend to leave a halo sometimes. So I almost always do that 50% around the outside. Um, she wants me to use Luminar. Okay, so we can do that. 
All right, so let's go to Luminar then. Why don't we do this one as a plugin? Okay, so I can show people the plugin workshop. Does that work for you? Or the plugin workflow? All right. So if you are using straight Luminar, you would just do this directly like what I'm going to do in Luminar, but I'm going to do the same sort of edits here. Right. So I'm going to change the camera profile. Okay. So in Lightroom, that's this little button up here. So I'm going to go under camera matching. And these ones do preview. So I want to just see. I want one that gives me maybe a little bit less contrast. So see how neutral solves a lot of the contrast problems right out of the gate. So I'm going to go with neutral, right? And if I turn on the clipping warnings, it's J key as well. There's nothing clipping, but the sky is really bright, okay? So when you're photographing, you want to try and avoid this situation. Um, and in the scene like where you are here, potentially if you had shifted around to your left and aimed your camera a different direction, you might have been able to avoid the bright background, right? Let's take a look at the settings. Okay, so F8, 1, 200. And did you use a flash here? Um, I'm guessing yes. Okay, so I could tell that, that Sheila used the flash here because there's a little pinpoint in her eyes. Can you see that? And that is a flash on camera. And it's right in the middle of her eyes. So I can tell that you used the flash on them, right? Which is great. So you've managed to balance the flash with the ambient pretty well. The next step for you, Sheila, is to get the flash off the camera so you get a little bit more directional light. No flash? Interesting. Um, sure looks like flash. So there's some kind of light coming into her eyes from somewhere. Are you sure that the flash didn't fire? Let's just look at your metadata here. See? See it says, can you see that? Flash did fire. Okay, so your flash did fire, Sheila. Okay, so either your on-camera flash popped up and fired or you had one on top. But it definitely shows that the flash fired. Okay. I'm pretty good at detecting these things. Uh, this one is um, your D7200, Nikon D7200. And I've got a cat walking across my desk. <laughs> hey, man. Do you want to say hi to everybody? She pushes buttons. Don't you mind? She pushes buttons. There you go. Okay, so let's work on this one. So we've got the camera profile. Sorry, I've got cat hair on my face now. And let's work on the color because they look a little bit off color as well. So I'm going to go with cloudy or shade. See how that changed the color and now they're a bit redder or warmer. Okay. Shade's going to give me even more warmth. So I'm color correcting for them, not the background. Okay. So, so far we're dealing with that. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to do shift double click on the whites and the blacks, but before I do that, mine, she's trying to eat my cupcake. Um, before I do that, I'm going to actually do uh, a quick adjustment on the sky because if I do the whites, like if I do shift double click on here, right, it's going to set the white point, but it's, it's basing it on the sky. Okay. So I want more whites to give more contrast to them, but it's kind of falsely reading the sky. If that makes sense. So let's do a mask for the sky. Okay, now I've got the sky and I'm just going to darken it. And I can see there's some clouds or some weird stuff going on there. And I'm actually going to blur it. So I'm going to lower the texture and the clarity. And that helps to, sorry, I've got a sneeze. <laughs> I get cat hair in my nose. That helps to deal with the edge here because often when we are um, selecting something, if I go too far, right, you start to see this, okay? So even in Lightroom, if your selection is perfect, you still have to watch out for going too far because it there, there'll be telltale signs of editing, okay? Uh, so I'm lowering the texture and the clarity to help minimize that edge. And I'm going to add a color. So in the color section here, I'm going to pick a blue but not super saturated. So somewhere, somewhere in this range here. 
can adjust the saturation this way, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to rename this sky, and you can see what that's doing. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to do the shift double click again. Okay, now you can see the difference. Okay, because the sky was giving me that false reading. Okay, now I also want to darken this area. Okay, so I'm going to do another selection, and what is going to be the best tool or masking to use in here? Okay, so I'm going to do this one with Lightroom, and then we'll go back and we'll do it in, in Luminar as well, because this is a great example. Okay, right, so what is the best way in here to select that? Okay, it's, I could select Luminous Range and go for those bright areas, or I could select Color Range, okay, so I'm going to select luminous range we'll try that and i'm just going to drag a little box around the trees now you'll notice that it's selected them as well which is fine so i'm going to subtract the sky so it doesn't have any sky subtract the subject so it doesn't have any of them and it's got a bit of this this part in the foreground as well so i don't want that either and the easiest way to subtract that is a linear gradient Okay, so I'm just going to draw a line like this. Okay, so you can see that it's eliminating anything that's down here. Okay, so now I have the bright trees selected, and I can also modify this luminance range. Okay, so I can adjust which tones are being selected. Okay, there we go. So not so much the dark areas. Okay. And then I can just bring the highlights down, overall down. Again, you don't want to go too far because you end up with this sort of mush looking thing and you have to be careful what tones are selected. Okay. And I'm also going to bring the texture and the clarity down. So it'll blur it a little bit okay, and minimize that, that bright texture in the background. See that? I'm going to refine this a little bit more, my luminance range. Okay, let's see that. How's that? That looks better. Okay. I could even desaturate it as well because the color being super bright takes your eye away, right? See the color? So I'm just going to bring the saturation down a little bit. Okay, so all of this is done to bring attention to the people. Right, so there's my mask. Right. The next thing I want to do is to straighten it a little bit because it looks crooked and to give it a compositional crop, right? Because they're dead center, right? So I'm going to use the crop tool, which keyboard shortcut is R. And I'm going to do auto and see if that adjusts anything. I'm looking at are these columns in the bridge straight? So maybe something like that, okay? I'm trying to find a balance. Okay? In terms of composition, there's a lot of space around them on both sides. I'm going to keep the aspect ratio the same. So I'm holding the shift key, or you can click the lock, and then just come in a little bit. So I'm going to move them off center. Okay, she's facing the camera, but remember you want more space in front of people and he's facing this way. So we don't need to see so much of this bridge. Okay, so let's just see what we get there. And then I'm going to apply just a little bit of overall clarity. And of course, an edge vignette. Okay, so just do that ever so subtly. So let's do a before. Right, they're really dark and after. And we could take it a step farther as well. Right. So I have some presets that I made as part of the Lightroom course. And I have one that is darken and blur background. Okay. So if I hover over it, you can see that that's going to serious extreme. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one is darkened sky. Uh, let's see, there's another one, Lighten Faces Darkened Background. 
Okay, so which of these, you know, looks the best? I might go with this one and then just edit, right? So it's added the background mask. I'm just going to edit this background mask because it's gone too dark, okay? But it's definitely lowered the texture. And if we want to select the subject and do a little bit of editing on them, I actually might lower the clarity and just soften them a little bit. And I want to darken this bottom part as well. So you'll see what I'm going to do for that. We'll just do a radio um, or a, I can't think of the name, graduated filter, graduated thing. And let's see. I might give them a bit more contrast as well. Okay. And warm them up just a little bit more. My mouse is doing weird things. <sighs> okay. So there's our before and after in Lightroom. Okay. Now let's take a look at Luminar and do the same thing because there's another one that's got really dark background. And uh, where's that image? Okay. So here's the same image in Luminar. So always start with raw develop. We'll do the same thing. And I went with camera neutral, okay, to lower the contrast. So I'll do the same here. Uh, I know that I warmed it up. I think I went with cloudy, right? Now the color's different here. The color's a little bit different. So we're going to play with that a little bit. And I'm going to check my curves. Turn on the clipping warning. So see the sky is clipping, right? So I can bring this highlights down, but keep in mind that lowers highlights on them as well. I'm going to work with the sky using the portrait bokeh AI, okay? We can also do a sky replacement in Luminar, which we can't do in Lightroom, right? So the sky is super bright here, okay? So that's looking better on them. A little bit yellow and let's give them just a little bit of smart contrast this is another one i really like a lot too smart contrast there we go so brighten up those shadows a little bit okay so before and after now let's go into that portrait bokeh and see what we can do about the background Okay, so I want to blur some of this background because it's very distracting. So when you're doing a portrait like this, I definitely would have shot this more wide open. Um, they're on the same plane, so they should be in focus. So I would have shot this probably at F4. Okay? So you don't need so much depth of field. You don't want this whole background in focus. Okay? So we've got the background blurry. We can darken it. And I'm going to add some blue to the background which will sort of neutralize these bright trees. Let's see if I go to extreme, but it also adds blue to the sky. See that? Okay, so I'm neutralizing that. Now I can decide how far I want this blur to come. Okay, if I bring it to the left, the blur gets closer to them. So it's going to blur some of these, these things here. I also need to make sure that they're masked correctly. So I'm just gonna paint that in. Make sure his leg is masked correctly. There's a little bit of the trees in here, so I'm gonna make sure I can blur the trees here. This little spot right here. Let's see if I got that right. There we go. Okay, so now I've got the mask better. If I bring this depth correction all the way to the left, right, it's gonna blur almost all the way up to them and you get like a serious starting to bokeh in the background, but it doesn't look realistic, right? So somewhere in here. I kind of want these leaves out of focus and maybe these top ones here. So that's looking fairly realistic for me, right? We can increase the amount and go blurrier. Right? We can darken a bit more. Okay, 
and maybe not so much depth. So I'm just playing with this depth correction because realistically, you know, you've shot F8. Some of this would be in focus, but we can fake this whole. See, as I bring it forward, the trees closer to them start to get blurry in the grass. Right? That does not look realistic at all. Okay. Of course, I haven't cropped it yet. So let's keep that in mind as well. Right? So that's not too bad. I find that this side looks more in focus. So if anything, I'm just going to give this side, this grass here, a quick shot of a little bit more focus on this side at 30% just to balance it out. Okay, that looks even. That looks good to me. So that is doing a really great job, right? And you notice that I couldn't get that same type of effect in Lightroom. Even if I go extremely blurry, it just ends up making a mess. So this tool is definitely better here in Luminar than it is in Lightroom. Okay, I am going to use the face light here. Okay. My mouse doesn't want to work properly today. Okay, so I'm going to use the face light. See how it's lighting their faces? So I'm going to bring it up fairly high. And then this is just affecting her eyes, right? We, we don't see his eyes, so this is her eyes. Because then we can darken the whole image, right? So I can do face light and then darken the whole image, brighten them up. Let's do a crop like I did the other one. Let's see what Luminar thinks. So Composition AI, okay? Hey, Karen, I've got some of your images. So Composition AI is suggesting we come in a little bit tighter, okay? So that's very similar to what I did. We don't need to see so much of the legs and the dress down here. And I cropped in to remove some of the stuff on the side. So moving this around, that's very similar to the crop that I did, okay? So let's see that. I'm going to add a vignette. And with this one, I'm just going to create a really round vignette right around them. Okay, so I'm going to bring it like here. And I wish I could actually make it smaller because we cropped it. It won't come any smaller, but. I'm going to do like this. So what I'm doing is I want to darken the bottom of her skirt a little bit. So I'm just going up higher. So I don't want to get her hand something in here. Okay. So I'm arranging this so that I can darken the sides and the bottom. See that? Like so. And we could try a sky replacement and see what that looks like. Okay. So it is suggesting some blue skies. So we could try one of those. Okay. And I definitely know that once we put it in there, we're going to need to defocus it right? because that doesn't look right. So we definitely need to defocus because I blurred the background. Okay. And I need to blend it a little bit better. So we need to refine the masks. Let's just see what this does. There we go. See, I'm looking at this edge here. Do you see this line? Right. Okay. So closing in the gaps and doing global. See how that brought the sky down? Look at that. Okay. That does a good job. Right. Okay. So is that the right sky, though? Do we like that sky? It's pretty blue. Oops. Ah, I clicked on that one. It takes me to the marketplace because it's not, it's a paid sky. Well, I'm going to look at my own skies. Uh, we definitely don't want an Aurora. Let's look at my original sky pack. Uh, it's definitely not a sunset. So you want to make sure you put a sky in that is appropriate, right? That's too dark. Yeah, definitely we want like a blue sky. Let's see what we got in here. Maybe one of these. And remember, it's super blurry, right? So we've got to blur it out. But that one's not too bad. Let's see what happens if we flip it this way, right? We can move it around like so. 
Now the sky's a little too bright, so we want to darken the sky. Right? Just a little bit. Or we can use one of these great, there's one that I downloaded that was a bunch of free ones, which was California Clear Skies. And these ones are kind of cool because they just have sort of this nice color tone, right? So it just gives us a blue sky, right? That's kind of matching his shirt, so that's not bad. So uh, half the time, some of these things are literally just, you know, playing around and seeing what you can do with it. But that's better. And I need to fix that little mask in there as well. Okay. But that's not too bad. Okay. Let's see. Do we have dramatic sky? No, it's not really dramatic. You really have to match the skies carefully. I've got a bunch of skies from Matt as well. Let's see. Stormy Lightning. No, we don't want that. We'll try a sunset, but I just don't think it's going to look right. No. I think we had the right one. Let's go back to this blue one here. So I brought it down a little bit. That looks good. Okay, so I need to fix that little mask in there, but there's our before and after. Okay. Taken early September around 7.30ish. Um, so if you're working on like sunset portraits, Sheila, do you have my portrait course? Um, Actually, I should even mention that right now. Rob, do you have the links? I haven't given you any links. Um, two things. Links for our Luminar course, but also for the Luminar Ultimate Bundle sale that's happening right now. Um, because our course, our portrait course, is in the bundle. So if you do not have our Portrait Fundamentals course, but you already have Luminar Neo, then you might want to pick up this bundle because let me just grab a link for you. Um, I think I've got the link here. Okay, so I'll put in both links and I'll put that in the chat for you. So if you already have Luminar, you want to use the second link. And if you do not, you want to use the first link, right? So let me just pull this on the screen and show you what's in it. So if you already have Luminar, it's a $99 bundle. This is US dollars. And look, there's me, right? So it's a bundle to go with things, right? I'm just going to go over here for a minute. All right, so you get courses from Albert on landscape photography editing, myself on portrait photography, and these guys on drone photography. So there's Albert's course, full editing on landscape, right? And mine on portrait photography and drones, if that's something that you do. And then you also get a Neo editing handbook from this guy and a whole bunch of stuff. So you get some LUTs, you get some skies, uh, you get some presets and overlays. You get a ton of stuff um, with this package that's worth about $1,000. And you, you can see mine is Canadian, but it's 99, 99 bucks US, right? So that's for you if you already have. Um, if you already have Luminar Neo and you'd like to take my portrait course, this bundle is the same price as our portrait course, but you get all this stuff with it. Okay, so you also get the landscape editing and then a whole bunch of skies and lots and other stuff, right? So if you want our portrait course and you want a good deal, this is a really good deal because it's like I said, $1,000 worth of stuff, right? I sent this out in the email as well. So if you're on my email list, I outlined this in the email. You wish you did not purchase the bundle? <laughs> Which one did you purchase, Sheila? Because this is available right now, right? So let me go back here. All right, so let's see if we can do one more image or two more images. 
Um, let's see. Uh, Karen just showed up, so I've got one of Karen's. Actually, I've got a couple of Karen's. So she's got some great grad portraits, and you indicated you wanted that done in Luminar as well. So I've got this portrait, um, and then this one are both Karen's. But this one is really similar to what we just did, right? We darkened the background, right? Now, I made some presets of my own, and I'm actually going to be making more presets for um, Luminar, and I'm going to be doing a video on the updates coming up right away. And I also promised to do my double exposure trick. So I will show you that. Um, oh, you have the extensions bundle. No, the extensions bundle has nothing to do with this bundle, Sheila. This is more, um, it doesn't, it doesn't come with the extensions. They, they are not included in this bundle. Um, it comes with courses. Click on the link and you'll see what's included. It comes with the three courses that I mentioned and a bunch of assets. So like the skies and the lots and the, and the presets and stuff. Okay. So this is one of the changes that happened with Luminar 1.7.0 is when you hover over a preset now, look, you get to see what it looks like. Okay. So I've created a few presets and I made a bunch of portrait ones already. And I'm going to be redoing them because they were done for um, they were done for Luminar AI, but I'm going to redo them, right? And just kind of going through, hovering over some of these, you can see this one that I made called Golden Glow actually does a really nice job. It's a little bit yellow, but I'm going to apply it. Let's just apply it, and then we can go edit it. Okay, so you can see the, the logo is doing its wave thing. So that means it's applying. Okay, So it's a little on the yellow side, but right out of the gate, it looks pretty good, right? Other than being too yellow. So I know where that yellow comes from. That's in the landscape tool because I added this golden hour um, thing right here. See? So I'm just going to dial that down and the foliage enhancer down. And then let's see. I'm going to go back up to the top, right? She still looks a little bit yellow, right? So I could go back and just go step by step. So I can look at what was done in develop raw. I can change the camera profile. Let's try something neutral or let's try, okay, let's try portrait. It looks maybe a little bit too, shadows lifted too much. Let's check the color here. Yeah, she looks a little too yellow. So we'll just dial that back a little bit and then go one by one. Okay, so face edits. I don't think she needs to have her face slimmed. Her eyes are a little bit dark, so we can brighten those up a little bit. Okay, let's see what that's doing. Okay, we're also enlarging her eyes. I can bring that up a little bit more. She's got one eye that's squinty. So we can actually come back and do the enlarge eyes on just that eye. Okay, so I could come back and do that. Let's see what the face is doing. Okay, so it's lighting her nicely, brightening her eyes. Okay, skin, she's got really good skin. So I don't think we need to do too much here. I'm gonna dial this down actually. I okay, think she doesn't need to be softened quite so much. And then let's see this landscape one. I'm going to dial this one down a little bit more. Okay. Let's see what the color is doing. Okay, so I think this one is adding. It's dialing down some saturation. So let's put that back up. Color harmony. You know this is one of my favorites. So I've added some yellow here as well. So I can dial it back. And then I can just check, okay, what's happening here. So if I want to brighten her, right, and darken the trees, I need to be somewhere in this zone. So see what that's doing? That's doing a good job. I can check to see if I've warmed anything up here. Right, I did. That looks good. I'm just double checking everything really quick. That's just sharpening. Super contrast looks good. Don't think I need sun rays, so I'm just gonna 
undo that. However, this beautiful sun is hitting her, her hair here. Okay, so if I want to have the sun rays, we could actually, you know, try and play with something like that, right? Where it's coming through the trees like so. And just get it on her on her head. See, I'm trying to play with it coming through the trees. No, I think I want to just eliminate it, to be honest. And we want to minimize that background. My, one of my favorites, mystical, right? Okay, mood, again, this is adding more yellow. So maybe I want to dial that down, okay? And toning, what I've done here, it looks like I've added some blue to the shadows, right? That looks fine. I'm going to dial that back as well. So this is a great way to show like how you can use a preset and then just adjust it. Okay. Let's just adjust the placement. There we go. So I dial the feather down to zero to get my vignette placed. Let's go not quite so dark. And then it looks like I've done a glow, which is on all of the light things. Okay, now I did not do um, a portrait bokeh background, so I'm going to do that. So we're gonna portrait bokeh, and we'll see what happens when we apply this. So again, I take it up fairly high, wait for it to do the masking. Okay? As soon as I put my mouse over, we'll see the mask. Okay, I wanna do that 50% trick all the way around her again. Okay, so I do this almost all the time when I'm using this tool and it helps to kind of eliminate that halo that we can get, okay, like that. And then I'm gonna bring the depth almost all the way forward because I want to really blur this background and darken it, okay. See what that's doing? And we're getting these nice bokehs in the background, really cool. Okay, so there already was a nice blur. We're just adding to it, okay? We can make the highlights stand out a bit more, right? That will bring the highlights standing out. We can make the background warmer or cooler, okay? A little bit of warmth. Let's go all the way with that. Let's see what happens if we go extreme. Taking a minute for it to catch up. And I do notice that like her hair, I believe, is, is overly bright and clipping. Okay, look at that beautiful soft background. Okay. Let's just check the histogram. I'm going to go to develop and see if her hair is clipping. Okay, so see this part of her, her collar is clipping so I can bring the highlights down and that helps. I still feel like she's a little bit orange. I'm not sure why. Let's try this. Now she's pink. Something like that. I'm gonna crop it a little bit and that's the final thing. Let's see what Luminar says is a crop. She's got a lot of space above her head, which is okay, but I don't think you need that much. And we could come in just a little bit tighter in general, overall. Okay. And I kind of don't want that bright spot of her collar. So I'm going to just put her ever so slightly off center. And now that I've done that, I feel like I want to darken the vignette a little bit more as well. Positioning it. Soften it. And there we go. Okay, so before, see the before and after. I still feel like she's a little bit orange. Um, I would work a little bit more on that color. We can just see if this color's removal 
helps with that. Kind of. Let's just see if we can shift the hue a little bit. Maybe I just need to desaturate orange. She just she just feels like she's a little bit orange. There we go. That's better. Yeah, she was just feeling a little orange. Okay, so there we go. Where did I get these presets? Um, no, I made this one. Um, these are ones that I made for Luminar AI, and they are available in the marketplace. They're um, they're called Fabulous Faces in the in the Luminar marketplace. Um, and I'm going to be redoing them so that they work. They do work for Luminar Neo. I think they've converted them as well. But I'm going to redo them with a few extra things because I've got um, like on my book overlays that I might add as well. The pink trim is a little bright too. Yeah, I agree. So that whole area with her hair is is a little bit bright. So we can actually work with it. We could just do a glow. So glow under here makes anything that's like pure white glow. See how her face is glowing and then this is glowing. So I can make it warmer. I can make it darker. And then what I can do is just paint it in okay, to here. So I'm just going to paint it into her hair like that. Okay. It's subtle, but see how it's just giving this a bit of a glow. Um, I want less contrast. And it's giving it sort of a warm color as opposed to just white. Okay. How did you light this, Karen? Tell me about the lighting because she's she's got backlight, but I don't see, and yeah, there's a light in her eye. Um, so was it just light from whatever is behind you? Did you use a reflector? Did you use a flash? Um, what did you, what did you use here? Because it's nice and sharp as well. Oh, the eye. Um, I said we were going to try to open her eye. Okay, so let's go back to eye. And I'm going to go to where are we face. Okay, so I'm going to do enlarge eyes and I'm going to take it up quite high because I'm looking at that one eye. Okay, so I want to wait to see until it opens that that eye. Uh, just sunlight, no reflector or flash. Okay, so the sunlight's coming from behind her. So there's something in front of her or something behind you that was actually reflecting to fill in. So it's possible that there's a, a bright building or something like that in behind you. Because can you see in her eyes, there's this, this is what's called a catch light. There's something putting light in her eyes. Um, if you go to the marketplace, Sheila, if you want my, here, I'll just find a link for you. Um, actually, could you find a link to our fabulous faces? Um, please Rob and put that for the marketplace for Sheila, put that in the chat. All right. Is her eyes, is it, is it working on her eye yet? I don't see it doing anything. Okay, let me come back here. Okay, let's try this again. Face. I just want to make sure it's working. So I'm just going to take face light up here somewhere so it can catch up. Because I want to, there we go. Okay, so now I know it's caught up. I want to do enlarge eyes. Interesting. It's not picking up her eye now. Yeah, it's not picking up her eyes. It did face light for me. Let's just see if it's catching up. I'll know because her eyes will be cat eyes. <laughs> All right, let's just see. There's the presets for you, Sheila, and the link in the chat. 
from memory, the building was a ways away, but maybe it was so hot and bright there was a reflection. Yes, there would be. I mean, you could have a building across the street, um, and this is actually the ideal situation. Um, you've you've actually put her in a place that's really really perfect. The only thing that I would have said is get her a bit out of that sun on the edge because it's so harsh. So see if you can soften it. So I love the hair light, but if you had moved her just a tiny bit out of the sun, um, it wouldn't be as strong. Uh, the sun was off to the side and caught her hair and eyes. No, the sun, the sun is behind her for sure. Right. Oh, there the eyes just popped up. Okay. So the sun is behind her, so it wouldn't be in her eyes. Right. So if I zoom in even more here, now that we've got cat eyes, um, you could see this light and it's definitely the sky. Okay. So the sky behind you is, is what's being the fill light here. Okay. So whether it happened by accident or you planned it, <laughs> it's working. Okay. All right. So let's just dial the enlargement back a little bit. So see what that's doing? It's enlarging the eyes. Okay. But I only want to put it on that one eye. So I'm just going to brush it in here. Okay. Because I only want to enlarge this one. Just to try and get them a little more the same size. Okay. Just open her eye a little bit. Okay. See that? So it is doing what I want. So we basically applied this one once and now we're applying it again just to open her eye a little bit. Okay. There we go. Karen says she wanted the backlight on the hair, didn't think about the reflection from the building. Well, guess what? <laughs> you got super lucky, right? So I, I literally look for locations that do this because when you have to photograph in the middle of the day, you want to put your subject in the shade. You want to have the background in the shade and have your subject far away from the, the background. So you've done all of the right things here, right? You've used um, a longish lens here. Let me just go over Lightroom so I can see the metadata easier here. Okay, so when we look at your metadata, okay, you've used a 70 mil lens on an 850, so that's a good focal length for a portrait. Okay, so you've used a 70 mil lens, longish lens. You've got an f2.8, so big aperture, which is going to throw the background out of focus, and you've got the background way far away. Okay, the only other change for the settings that I would suggest here is you didn't need to use ISO 800 or 2500 of a second. You could use ISO 200 and then just bring your shutter speed down. doesn't need to be that high ISO, but you're not getting a lot of noise there because that's a good, um, you know, camera with decent noise um, at high ISO, but you don't need to use ISO 800, but you've done everything right in terms of placement and the lighting. Um, if you had a reflector and you had it off to the side, like, Imagine you're holding it to your left, right? So it would be like over here on, on her face. You would get a little bit more directional light and you could get that sun hitting a white reflector coming back into her face and you'd have absolutely beautiful lighting, but you've got something or a building or a sky behind you doing that same thing, okay? You know, look at the difference, okay? But you've got a beautiful, is this your daughter, Karen? Whatever you've done here, you've done a great job and she should be very happy with this portrait. So awesome job. <laughs> Got lucky. Well, go with it. Just tell people I meant to do that. <laughs> it's a happy accident. Granddaughter. Wow, she's beautiful. Um, what is she graduating? Is it high school or college? Looks like more of a university graduation. Do we have time for one more? Well, Karen is telling us about her granddaughter. I do want to do something in Lightroom as well. Is Holly here? Holly said she was going to come an hour late. Masters at university. Wow. Okay, so beautiful and smart. Let's do one in Lightroom. I want to do one of Holly's, but I'll save it for when she's here. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. AJ hasn't been here in a while, but we're going to do this one. And Trish is not here today. So we're going to do this one here. 
And this will be our, our last one. Studying for her doctorate. Wow. Um, in what topic, Karen? So master's in, in what? All right. So this one was sent to me by AJ. Now it's a, it's a JPEG. Okay. So we're going to have some limitations on what we can do with it. Right. We don't see the white balance options and um, I don't see the camera profiles and so on. Okay. So we have to go based on, on what we have here, which is Lightroom options. Okay. So I could choose a camera profile. I really like modern three. I find it works a lot, but look at what modern two does. It's punching up the contrast. <coughs> I like modern two. It's punching up the contrast and the color right out of the gate. Right? Drinking my cold coffee. Okay, so I'm going to do shift double click on the white. Oh, shift double click. I'm pressing the wrong button. And it went way far high. Aha. Okay, now I've discovered something. See this here? See there's a big gap between the, the whites and the ends of the histogram? Pretty sure that's what that modern is doing. So I might go back to just basic Adobe color. Right? Okay, see how I changed that? And now it goes to the end. So what the modern was doing was bringing the highlights, um, keeping white from being pure white. Okay? So I, I can show you how to do that if you want. And I want to clip a little bit of the black. Okay? And let's brighten the midtones. So it's that dance, remember, between all of these sliders. So I'm brightening the whites to add more contrast, brightening the darkening the blacks also for contrast. And then this slider exposure adjusts the midtones. Okay. So we've brightened him up a little bit. I want to make sure I'm keeping detail. I'm pressing the Alt Option key, right, to see the clipping warnings while I'm doing the sliders. Now this one is super easy in terms of we can add a vignette. Okay, these are just presets that I've made as part of our um, Lightroom preset pack. Hey, Holly's here. Okay, well, maybe we'll do one of Holly's next as well. Um, so you missed it, Holly. I have a cupcake because it's my birthday weekend. <laughs> Rob brought me a cupcake, which the cat tried to eat. Um, so we're still having some technical issues, but we're forging through anyways. English literature. Wow. Okay. I'm really impressed, Karen. You must be so proud. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I want to highlight him. He's already highlighted and the background is dark. So I don't know if I really need to go much further. Um, the cropping, how I want to crop this is, see how tight it is to the top of his helmet? I actually want to come into his head. So when you're dealing with people like this, right? Remember, you want more space in front, which he has, right? So I'm okay with the composition, um, in terms of placement, but I'm actually going to come in to his head and I'm just keeping the aspect ratio by holding the shift key down. Right. I don't want to crop any of the back off because I want to keep his, his uniform. Right. Just gives me a little bit more dramatic portrait. Right. Adding the vignette. Now what we can do is we can select background. Okay. Right? So it's done a pretty good job except for this bit here. So I can just do subtract and I'm using this objects one a lot. Okay. So I just paint over the part that I want it to reanalyze basically and say, okay, look, this is not part of the background and it just kind of pops in. So that's really good. So this one, I am going to darken it a little bit more, but we can also then, you know, shift the color. I can make it warmer. I can make it blue, like literally, right? So would he be on a blue background if he's in the field? Mm, no, maybe not. But I can take the warm out and make it more neutral, okay? Because warm colors take your eye, right? And his skin tone and the background are very similar. So by minimizing that, okay, he stands out more. Okay, can you see that? I'm just darkening it a little bit. Okay, we could even remove further clarity and texture. 
or I can give it a bit more contrast, right? I can increase the highlights and decrease. So I'm adding some contrast here, increase the highlights, decrease the shadows. Because right? I want to keep it a little bit of texture there. So it looks like there's something. Let's bring that back up a little bit. And we'll call it background. Right. So the guy himself is not super sharp. Um, and he's got some, you know, skin blemishes and so on. So I'm going to take this one over to Luminar and let's see what we can do. Now, again, when we go to Luminar, we have a couple of options. Okay. I usually go to Photoshop first as a smart object. So if you're using Lightroom, you right click, choose edit in and open a smart object. Okay. Welcome, Amy. Where did you find us? First time here. So how did you find out about the live stream? Was it from my email? Did you see it on Facebook? Or did you just happen to find us? Glad to have you. Sorry, Amy's dad. So not Amy. <laughs> yes, you're right. Amy's dad. So Amy's dad. Amy's dad, welcome. Okay, so now I'm in Photoshop and it was not fitting on my screen. So let me just do that. And what I want to do in Photoshop is literally I'm just using Photoshop as the base to take it to the plugin of my choice. So I could take it to Topaz or I could take it to, to Luminar, okay? So in this case, let's try Topaz. Right. We tried Luminar already. Let's do Topaz. Uh, where are we? Sharpen AI. So Topaz Sharpen is another one that takes a really long time. Okay. Saw my email. Awesome. So are you are you new to my email list as well, Amy said, or have you um, just discovered us? Because I know we've got some people who are actually buying the bundle. Oh, doesn't want to open my image and sharpen now. It thinks that I have to buy it. So, okay, hang on. Let me go back to Photoshop. Shop. All right, we're going to use Neo then because it wants me to renew my license for Topaz, which I haven't got right now. So um, a lot of people who are buying the bundle are getting our portrait course and um, getting our emails for the first time. So if you bought the bundle from Skylum and you are now here, Welcome, and I hope you enjoy the portrait course if that's how you found us. Okay, so now I'm going to Neo again, and we're going to try, <coughs> we're going to try the sharpening, super sharp. It's probably open somewhere, and I'm missing it. Oh, there we go. It's on my other screen. Here we are. Okay, I've got two monitors. Okay, so what I want to do here is just go back to the sharpening again. So I could try the two methods that I tried on the other one, which is details. Okay, so this is what I used prior to super sharp existing, right? So look at how much sharper <coughs> his face is just by using the small details slider. And I really, really like this method actually. I'm just going to deal with my cough here. So look what a great job that's doing. You find, I find that when you do this though, you'll get um, some noise showing up. So I want to make sure this is only applying on his face where I want it to apply. Okay. So I'm going to paint this in and I'm going to paint it over where I want the details. Okay. Now you notice that like all of this part where he's got whiskers, right? If we make that sharper, look at how much sharper the image looks. Okay. Let's maybe do his ear, but not quite at 100%. Let's get this hair. Okay. 
So hair, when hair is sharp, the picture looks sharp, okay? And I'm going to get the edge of the helmet. Okay, so look at how much sharper that looks already when you have details, okay? See that? That's brilliant. Looks great. I'm happy with that, <laughs> just the way it is. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the adjustments and maybe dial that down just a tiny bit. So already, that's a whole bunch sharper. Okay, let's try the super sharp. Okay, again, there's two options, universal or motion blur. I don't think this is motion blur, so I'm going to do low. And I recommend not using the face enhancer, okay? Because the face enhancer literally changes the person's face. Um, I've tried it on multiple things, and I've sent in reports to Skylum as to what it's doing, and it's not doing a good thing. <laughs> Thanks, Karen and Holly, for the birthday. No cat hair allowed in the cupcake. Well, there's cat hair everywhere. <laughs> so... Uh, I went to see my doctor the other day just to get some, some blood work done, and uh, I had cat hair on my pants, and I offered to give him some, but he said he already had dog hair. So, Do I like small details for face sharpening? Uh, yes, just exactly what I just did. So I used the small details, and then I painted it in to just parts of his face, right? I didn't paint it on the skin, okay? All right, so let's see what this one is doing. I'm going to do a before. Okay, so it is, it's doing a good job. It's adding even more sharpness. Okay, so there's before Skylum period, and that's where we are now. It looks pretty darn sharp. Look at the hair. I'm going to zoom in on another, another go here. Okay, so looking, looking, looking at his eye and the whiskers, okay, there's the before. Look at his whiskers. Look at how much sharper it looks. Okay. And you notice, like I said, I did not paint the sharpening into his skin. So I could have copied that mask. Okay. I can still do that actually. Okay. So I can apply that sharpen. I can go back here to details, copy the mask, and then go paste it into here. Because then we're not sharpening the background and everything else, okay? And I don't need to sharpen his shirt or anything. I just want it applying on the face, right, to make him look sharper. Actually, let's put it on his shirt, too. I'm going to apply this one a little bit more broadly. Let me just see. I'm going to show where the mask is. I think it's catching up to me again. Okay, there we go. So you can see where I painted in the mask. But you see how I did not paint the parts of his cheek? Okay. So this one here, I could do the helmet as well. You can actually see the sky reflected in the helmet, which is kind of cool. I could do his jawline. Okay. So let's just apply that. So when I hit apply, okay, so this is the advantage of going through Photoshop first. So now when I apply it as a plugin for Photoshop, it brings me back to Photoshop, okay, which is here. And where's my layers? It's now a smart filter, okay? So if I just double click where it says Luminar Neo, it will take me back to Luminar Neo and all the edits are still there. I can adjust any of the sliders or do any of the masking. I've lost nothing, okay? So now when I close this, all I wanna do is do save. So con command or control S and then close, okay? So don't save it as, but just save and then close. That will bring you back to Lightroom with this new image that was created um, as a PSD, okay? Please give this video a thumbs up. We've already got a few hearts and thumbs up. So if you're enjoying these tips, give it a thumbs up. And that helps us rank on YouTube. So we appreciate that. Okay, so now we're back in Lightroom. And you can see there's two versions now. Okay, so here's the PSD. Where did we go? 
I want to show you these side by side. Okay, so the best way to do that is with this compare view. So here's the PSD. I want them opposite. Let me, there we go. Okay, so before is on the left. You can see the JPEG. After is on the right. And then let me just zoom in. Oops, a little too much zoomed. Look at the difference. Can you see that? And that was the small detail slider and the super sharp AI. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. So if AJ is watching, that's what I would do with this portrait. Just sharpen it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Holly. Miss Holly is here. Miss Holly is in the house. Um, now I've got a couple of different images of Holly's. Um, these ones here that you sent. And I know you did these at a workshop, right? So did I do this one before? I feel like I did this one before and added the background. Like, did I do that? Remind me. Um, the studio one. But I wanted to do this one that's outdoors anyways. But remind me if I've done the studio one already. Because I think we did. Okay, so Holly is a Luminar person. So we're going to go back to Luminar and get this one here. All right. So remember what we did with the other image that had the bright background of the couple, okay? Uh, I did the studio one that was similar. Okay, all right. Well, so we're definitely going to do this one. All right, so I want to do similar to what I did where I darkened that background from the one of Sheila's because we've got a parking lot and some other, you know, stuff going on here, okay? So before I do anything, develop raw, okay? So camera profile, we can try portrait. I find the portrait ones, again, are often red, and I'm not a super fan of them. Um, camera standard is usually better, to, in my opinion, okay? So that's the Luminar standard. See how camera standard just gives you a punchier image? So we start with camera standard. Our exposure, let's check our, our histogram. Okay, so there are some things clipping, mostly in the background. So we're going to deal with that in a different way, right? but I can bring the highlights down a bit here, okay? I just don't wanna make her too flat, okay? So if I bring the highlights down, it flattens her out, okay? See that? So I'm gonna just go part way because we're gonna deal with the background in a different way, right? I'm mostly looking at her. How's her color? Uh, we could try the eyedropper on her coat. Is her coat black? Now she looks kind of green. Let's give her a little more suntan. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so before and after so far, we could add a little bit of sharpening here. I don't add a lot of sharpening here because I don't want to sharpen the background. This is overall. You cannot mask the develop raw tool. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. There's not a lot to do here. Um, otherwise, because the image is quite good. Um, we've got nice blacks. I could bring the shadows up, which brings her jacket up a little bit, but I actually don't mind it being too dark. So let's just find a balance. A okay? little bit of detail in the jacket, keeping some black. How's that? Okay. So the next thing I want to do is crop it. Again, same thing with the other one. This guy is throwing off the um, measuring, okay? Let's see what Luminar thinks is a good crop. Okay, so it's come in fairly tight. I like cropping off a lot of this bit on the, on the right. I wanna keep, again, we're at that place where it's tiny, it's tight on her head, okay? I would like to either see more or come in tighter, okay? So we could crop into her head I don't mind head cropping and just below the elbows. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to agree with Luminar's crop. Nah, I'm not liking the, I'm not liking the crop into the head. So I'm going to give her a little bit more space. Okay. Keeping the space at the top, give her a little bit more space on the elbows. Okay. Now I can do a vignette 
but I want to do that background darken first. Okay, so we're going to go straight to portrait bokeh. There's two ways we could do this. Okay, I want to do portrait bokeh. And then I'm going to show you the layer duplication method. Do you remember that one? Because that will darken our background as well. We can do that. Right. So again, she's cut out. Let's do the 50% focus thing. I'm just going to go around the outside. So with the brush set to focus, go around the outside and you'll get rid of that halo. Okay. I wish there was an easier way to refine the edge, but I find that this works pretty well. Okay. Depth correction. I'm going to bring this closer. So I want more blur. I'm going to bring it all the way, actually. Okay, so now we're blurring everything, including the wall, which is fine. I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I want to darken it. Okay, so we're going to darken it. And do we want to warm it up or cool it down? Okay, I think it actually looks better warmer. It feels more sunlighty. Okay, so I'm going to give it a little bit of warmth. Um, I still feel like there's a little bit of halo in here in her hair. So one more pass over here. Nope, still. See the halo that I'm seeing? I'm looking at the white bit around her hair. So I just want to make sure that there's no halo. Maybe I need to go the other way. Oh, I'm gonna need to go the other way. I've gone too far now. And remember, you can actually fix messy hair this way too. There we go. I was going the wrong way. Okay, I'm just gonna get in here and get some of this white out. So if you've got straight flyaway hairs like this one here, you can actually get rid of it by defocusing it. Right, see this one here? I can just get rid of this hair or blur it a bit more, right? Look at that. So I'm cleaning up her, her hair now. I could get rid of this whole mess over here too. Okay, so we're getting close. See her hair? Look at that. Cleaned up the hair on that side, okay? And I could do the same over here. Let's just see what happens if I do this. Okay. So I'm telling it to blur that. See that? Cleaned up her hair. Let's do the other side too. I'm going to go even further. Just want to clean this up. Okay, so see before and after. She has a lot of hair. <laughs> she has a lot of hair. So I'm just trying to find this balance between making her hair look blurry and cleaning it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now remember, um, this is one that I can't mask, right? So I can brush out part of this, okay? So if I go back to focus, I can do it at 30%, okay? And make a big brush, and I can just take say one pass down the side here to put that part of that wall a little bit more in focus. Okay, let's try it a little bit more like so. All right, so I'm just trying to blend this wall a little bit. I can also adjust the depth correction a tiny bit. There we go. That's working. Okay, so there's our background blur. I'm gonna take it extreme. Okay, and then we can do our vignette. Okay, so background blur first, then vignette. Okay, so take it dark. I'm gonna make it round. Close it in around her and make sure I position it. Let's 
something like that. Okay, so just gonna darken the bottom, which is fine. Make it a little bigger. Okay, see what that's doing. Now, if the wall over here is still too bright, we can do a develop, the same thing here, right? Or we can do um, a layer, right? I think she's a little bit dark now, so two things. We can either do develop here and brighten her, or we can go all the way back to the beginning, develop raw, and just push the exposure a little bit. And then when we come back to apply all the edits, my mouse is doing funky stuff because it's probably got cat hair in it, right? It's just going to brighten her up a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer, okay? So I'm going to duplicate the layer. And then under layer properties, I'm going to change it to multiply. And it should darken, yes. Okay, and then for masking, I'm going to do portrait background, okay, so it should select her, okay. I could also do background removal, so either or, okay, so I'm going to say remove the background, so it should select the background and, and remove it, but then I'm just going to invert the mask, okay. So I want this to apply on, eh, it's not the best selection, but let's just go over here, okay, so I'm inverting the mask, so it's now on her, okay? So not the best mask ever, but let's just, let's just uh, paint it in where it's missing, okay? So there, okay, so that's basically what I wanna do is darken the edges. And now I'm just gonna come back and lower the opacity, okay? So see what that's doing? Now, if I want it more on this side and less on this side, I just have to mask it out again. Okay, so I'm going to erase it at, say, 40% oops, on this side. Okay, so not as much darkening on this side. Don't want to darken her hand. Okay, okay so there is the layer. We'll just hide it. And that's just a quick way to darken that background. Okay, so there's the before and after. And what I might do is go in here and like clone out some of these really bright spots. But of course, if I do it on here, that bottom layer may show through. So you want to do anything that you want done on the whole image first, okay? So I could try and get this spot out. And let's see if it works here because it's going to apply to that darkening blend mode. So I don't know if it's going to work. We have to apply, erase it on the bottom layer. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Let me see if there's any questions. So how did you edit this one, Holly? Did you edit this one previously? Still working on erasing that spot. Still working on erasing. Just a reminder, um, okay, so it said it's erased it. Yeah, see, it needs to erase on the bottom layer. So it did It did darken it, um, but I think we have to erase it on both layers. So just a reminder, I'm going to go back to Lightroom for a minute um, because I've got the thing for next week. So next week we're going to try this again. We're still working on fixing the technical issues, obviously, but here's the link to submit your images, okay? So please submit bird images. That's what we're looking for for next week. I've got a few, um, but if we get a few more, um, that doesn't hurt, right? So we still got people images and I've still got street photography left. So I've got lots of great images that you guys have submitted. Um, I'm going to call it a day here. Let me just see if I end up blurry over here again. Um, see if I end up as a big blurry mess. So we're going to call it a day and I'm going to go eat my cupcake. Yeah, I'm a big blurry mess. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for joining in and putting up with the
technical difficulties that we're having. We, as Rob says, we've been working with their tech support to try and address these issues. We have no idea what's causing it, but we've given them some log files and I've done some tests for them. So hopefully we'll be able to resolve it very soon. And um, if not, we'll look at another type of platform to be presenting live. So we're going to resolve the technical issues and we will forge through. And, uh, oh, I had one of your images too, Marty. I could do yours next time also. So thanks for joining in everybody and for putting up with the, the technical nonsense that is the internet. <laughs> and uh, I will have a good birthday. Thank you so much. Take care and we hope to see you again next week and submit your bird photos and get out there doing some photography as well. Take care.